Hi everyone, welcome back once again to my educational channel on biology. In this video, we are going to discuss subtopic 8.4 from the Form 4 Biology KSSM syllabus. The title is Health Issues Related to the Human Respiratory System. So we're going to talk about COPD, which, is, which stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. And we're going to talk about the effects of this COPD on the human respiratory system. Okay, so the three diseases involved that we're going to discuss, which are COPD, are chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and asthma. So let's begin. The learning standards for today's lesson are as follows. 8.4, health issues related to the human respiratory system. We should be able to narrate the effects or explain the effects of COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease on the human respiratory system. So the diseases that we are going to discuss are asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. So here's an exam tip. So for uh, most questions in the exam related to diseases, it will be about the definition, the cause, symptoms, or effects on health, or prevention and treatment. Thus, for every disease, we must know these four aspects. Okay? to be able to answer the questions in the uh, SPM. Firstly, what is the meaning of COPD? COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a group of long-term lung diseases, for example, asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema, or short form is ACE, in which the air passages are inflamed or blocked, or the alveoli are damaged, causing reduced airflow and difficulty in breathing, right? So the word chronic means a long-term condition that does not go away. Obstructive means that the airways, such as the bronchi and the bronchioles in the respiratory system are narrowed and blocked. They can be blocked by mucus or so, right? And uh, they are narrowed due to the swelling of the walls of the bronchial tubes. And then that will lead to difficulty in breathing. Then uh, pulmonary means a condition that affects the lungs. And a disease is a sickness. So let's find out more about this definition, about the diseases involved. So as we have said, the definition for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is that it's a group of long-term lung diseases where the bronchi and bronchioles are inflamed, swollen and blocked or the alveoli are damaged, causing reduced airflow and difficulty in breathing. So here's a picture of the respiratory system, and we have to revise this, these parts here, okay? So the trachea is the main, main windpipe that allows air to flow from the nose, right, into the, in, into the chest area. Then trachea, the trachea branches to form two bronchi, and the singular form is bronchus, okay? So each bronchus then divides further to form the tinier bronchioles, which are the air tubes leading to the, to the alveoli or air sacs. Now, in COPD, the bronchi and the bronchioles may become inflamed, that means swollen, and then uh, they may produce a lot of mucus, as in chronic bronchitis. Then for emphysema, the alveoli are damaged, the walls of the alveoli are damaged, causing reduction in total surface area of the alveoli for gaseous exchange. So all this will cause a lack of oxygen in the body and also a reduction in the airflow when the bronchus and bronchioles are bronchi and bronchioles are inflamed. Then uh, there's difficulty in breathing and in obtaining enough oxygen for cellular respiration. We'll discuss more of this as we go along. Now, what are the general causes of COPD? There are two main causes. The first is long-term exposure to toxic gases, such as cigarette smoke, especially for those people who are heavy smokers, air pollutants, fumes, and dust. So uh, long-term exposure to cigarette smoke, for example, can cause bronchitis, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. And then for asthma, the cause is mainly allergy, which is hypersensitivity or oversensitivity to uh, 
certain substances such as pollen grains in the air, floating in the air, or pet fur, inhalation to this inhalation of these substances, all right? Dust, coal, air, that's all inhaled. So for certain people, these substances mentioned here can be allergens or substances that cause allergy, all right? And when there's an allergy, then it can lead on to asthma. We'll find out more when we talk, when we discuss asthma later on. Okay, what are the symptoms of COPD? Shortness of breath. That means the person cannot breathe in enough oxygen, so he starts to breathe very fast and his breath is very short in order to try to get more oxygen. And then there's a wheezing sound, like a hee hee sound as if breathing, because the air is moving through the narrow air passages very quickly. Now, coughing, mucus production, a lot of mucus production in some cases, and uh, this will cause the person to be fatigued or very tired because of the lack of oxygen and the constant coughing and shortness of breath. Okay, So COPD is a progressive disease and worsens over time. It's a long-term disease and it can progress and become worse. Right? Finally, everyday activities like walking may get difficult. For especially for emphysema, if the alveoli are damaged already, there's no, uh, you cannot reverse that situation. So the patient will suffer from lack of oxygen to carry out respiration, and he will not have enough energy for daily activities. So uh, he will not be able to carry out normal activities like walking because he can't get enough ox oxygen to carry out this uh, activity even. Now explain the treatment or prevention of COPD. So generally, medication is inhaled to quickly relax the muscles in the lungs and to open up the swollen air passages. All right? So for asthma, for example, in asthma, the muscles in the bronchial tubes are contracted. They contract. So when they inhale the medication, the muscles will relax and this will open the swollen air passages. And the the medication is inhaled by using this inhaler that is put into the put in the mouth and then the liver here is pressed down, right? So secondly, steroids can also be inhaled using the inhaler here to reduce inflammation or swelling in the bronchioles so that the person can breathe more easily. So steroids will cause a reduction in the inflammation of the walls of the bronchioles and then the airways will also become bigger. As a result of that. Thirdly, in very serious cases, the patient can be attached to a oxygen tank, okay, by using a tube and then the patient will wear the oxygen mask. So you can inhale oxygen through the from the portable tank so that he gets enough oxygen for cellular respiration. Fourthly, avoid lung irritants. So this is a preventive measure. And uh, patients who have who suffer from COPD should avoid smoking, right? So avoid cigarette smoke and also toxic fumes that can irritate the bron bronchioles and the bronchi. Now, lastly, wear a face mask to protect the lungs if air is polluted, as in this case. This is to prevent the inhalation of air pollutants that can irritate the bronchi and the bronchioles and also may damage the alveoli. Now, state three examples of COPD. So COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease comprises three diseases, asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. So using the first letters of these diseases, A, C, and E, we form the acronym ACE for the three diseases that are examples of COPD. So asthma in BM is called asthma, and in Mandarin, it's called Xiao Chuan, right? So let's have a brief uh, overview of these three diseases. In asthma, the bronchial wall becomes swollen and thick or inflamed due to an allergy. Now, allergy in Malay is called alahan, and in Chinese, it's called guomi. It means being hypersensitive sensitive or oversensitive to certain substances that are breathed in, as an example. For example, Pollen grains. Some people are allergic to pollen grains. They are oversensitive. So when they breathe in this substance, there is an overreaction of the immune system. And the immune system will produce substances that cause the 
swelling of the bronchial wall. Okay, then this will cause the air passage to become narrower and the smooth muscle in the bronchial wall may contract also, causing the air passage to become even narrower. Now in chronic bronchitis, the bronchial wall is also swollen, that means inflamed, and this is but this is caused by irritants that are inhaled, such as cigarette smoke and other air, and certain air pollutants. So furthermore, the cells lining the surface of the bronchial here, uh, be, they because they are they react by producing a lot of mucus, right? And this will cause blockage of the bronchial tubes. Now in emphysema, cigarette smoke and other substances that are inhaled that contain, that contain the toxic chemical substances break down the wall of the alveoli and damage the alveoli. So this causes the total surface area of the alveoli to become smaller and gaseous exchange is reduced. So the first COPD disease that we're going to talk about is asthma. Now, let's look at the normal condition of the bronchioles in a healthy person. So in a healthy person, the bronchial wall is of normal thickness and it is not swollen. Right? The air passage is wide because of that and there's a small or normal amount of mucus that moisten the surface of the bronchial. Then the muscles that surround the bronchial wall here is relaxed and not contracted. Okay. Now, what happens in an asthma patient? Okay, uh, when the asthma attack occurs. So, firstly, the patient may breathe in something that he's sensitive to. Okay, and uh, he may have an allergy or he may be hypersensitive, overly sensitive to certain substances in the air, for example, pollen grains floating in the air from flowers that are blooming or dust particles in the air or cat's fur that is in the air. So if he inhales the particular allergen or substance that caused the allergy and he is allergic to that substance, then he will his immune system will overreact by producing certain substances to try to eliminate or destroy these allergens like pollen, dust, cat's fur. So when the immune system overreacts, it produces substances that causes the inflammation of the bronchioles. Okay, so uh, allergy is called alahan in uh, BM and in Chinese it's called guomi, right? Okay, so for healthy people, they are not, they may not, they will not be allergic to all these substances. Okay, it's only for people who have, who are overly sensitive to particular uh, substances. So next, when the person breathes in the pollen, dust or cat's fur and then suffers from the allergy, his immune system reacts and causes inflammation of the bronchioles. Okay, so the wall of the bronchial will become inflamed. That means it will become swollen and then it will move in, inwards and cause the air passage to become narrower. All right, as the wall of the bronchioles become thicker, then the air passage becomes narrower. Furthermore, there may be contraction of the smooth muscles, especially in case, cases where the attack is severe. The smooth muscles contract and constrict the air passage even further. All right, until the person may not be able to really get enough oxygen for cellular respiration. We may not be able to breathe well, okay, or breathe deeply. And there may be production of excess mucus, all right? So take note that three things occur in the uh, respiratory system of the asthma patient, especially during an asthma attack. Firstly, the bronchial wall becomes swollen and thick and the air passage narrows. Secondly, there's excess, there may be excess mucus secreted that further blocks the passage, air passage. And thirdly, the smooth muscle can contract in serious cases during the asthma attack. Okay, muscle spasms can occur, which further 
uh, cause the patient to have difficulty in uh, breathing. So the symptoms are shortness of breath, where the patient has to breathe very fast, trying to breathe a lot of oxygen in, but the breath is very short. So it's like a bit like panting like that. Like that huh? And then there may be cough. Okay, the cough is to try to expel the excess mucus from the lungs. And there's chest tightness, excess mucus. And there is wheezing sound. The wheezing sound is like hee sound, especially when they are ex exhaling the air. All right, because the air has to flow through the narrow air passage and this causes a wheezing sound. All right, during the, especially during the exhalation process. So mainly there is shortness of breath and difficulty in breathing during the asthmatic attack. And it can be dangerous if the patient does not get enough oxygen into the lungs. Right, so this additional diagram helps us to understand uh, better what happens in asthma, right? So in a normal condition for a healthy person, the airflow is normal and good because the wall of the bronchial, the blue lines here, okay, are not inflamed. So they are thinner, the wall of the bronchioles are thinner and a small amount of mucus lines the airways. This is the normal situation. Furthermore, the smooth muscle in the wall of the bronchial here relaxes. So this causes the airways to be to open. Now in asthma, due to inhalation of pollen or other allergens that cause oversensitivity to the person, uh, allergy will occur. So only certain people have this problem of allergies, not everybody, right? For us, the breathing in of certain substances like pollen or cold air will not trigger any reaction, all right? But for the person with uh, asthma, it is a trigger and it causes the immune system to produce substances to uh, sort of get rid of these substances that are inhaled, like pollen. So when they try to, the immune system tries to react, it will produce substances that cause the wall of the bronchial to become inflamed and swollen, as seen here. And then the airways will become narrower. Okay, now in the cross section, if you cut through the bronchioles here, you'll see that the wall is inflamed or swollen and the airway is narrower. There's more mucus produced too, in most cases, which will block the airway further. All right, and then in very serious cases when there's asthmatic attacks, the smooth muscle in the wall of the bronchial may contract, causing the airway to become even narrower and more difficulty, there's more difficulty in breathing. So this can be very dangerous for the asthma patient when they cannot get enough oxygen into their lungs and into their bodies. So what are some causes of asthma? Now for different people, the trigger or the cause of asthma may be different, all right? But for a normal healthy person, they will not be overly sensitive to all these substances that they inhale, okay? So only for the asthmatic patient, they are sensitive to certain substances such as, for example, animal fur that's inhaled into their lungs, a pollen, dust, cold air, air pollutants in the atmosphere, such as is found uh, in the industrial areas or even the haze that occurs in Malaysia for certain in certain months, right? So during the period of the haze in Malaysia, doctors uh, recorded a higher uh, degree of a higher incidence of asthma in their patients. Now, genetics can also be one cause, meaning to say those who have a family history of uh, asthma in their family, yeah, maybe in the parents or relatives, may be more likely to uh, suffer from this condition, from asthma. And smoking can also, the cigarette smoke can also uh, be a trigger for certain people to suffer from asthmatic attack, right? Where the, there's inflammation of the bronchioles. So what are the symptoms of asthma? As we have said, coughing, breathing difficulty, chest pain, shortness of breath, uh, allergies is the start uh, of the condition can lead to this uh, from allergies it can lead on to asthma and then fatigue or feeling tired here are the smart notes for asthma which you can copy down so they are very useful especially when you need to answer structured questions or essay questions
questions that are longer. Now, asthma is a disease in which the bronchial walls become inflamed, swollen, and thick, causing the opening of the bronchial tube to become smaller, meaning that the air passage becomes narrower or smaller. So cells in the lining may produce more mucus, and muscles surrounding the airways or bronchioles or the airways and the bronchioles may contract. Now, these changes will make breathing difficult and the person does not get enough air into the lungs. Okay, So the changes occur to the muscles, the smooth muscles, to the cells that produce more mucus and to the wall of the bronchioles that are inflamed. Now, the cause has been discussed. is uh, due to allergy, to allergens. And also, when the allergens are inhaled, the immune system reacts strongly by causing inflammation of the bronchioles. Symptoms have also been discussed. Now, let's look at these pictures here. Normal airway. The airway is open. And then, in an asthma patient, the wall is inflamed. And there may be excess mucus. But the muscles, smooth muscles may be relaxed. In an asthmatic attack, which is serious, the muscle contracts, smooth muscle contracts, and further constricts the airways, making it, making it smaller so that breathing becomes even more difficult. Now, what is the treatment for asthma? As we have discussed just now, for the treatment of COPD, right, it's almost the same. Now, in asthma attack, the patient may be may use a quick relief inhaler, like this one here, is a device where you can press and uh, allow the medication to be inhaled in through the mouth, all right? But it will go into the trachea and into the lungs. So the quick relief inhaler contains the medication called bronchodilators. It's meant to open up the swollen airways to make breathing easier and reduce the asthma attack, okay? So it acts on the walls of the bronchi and bronchioles to open up the airways. Now, long-term control medications, which are steroids, reduce the swelling in the airways, the, the swelling in the walls of the walls of the bronchial and bronchi. Now, allergy medications may be uh, taken to help reduce allergies for asthmatic patients, right? So that when these allergies are reduced, then there's less inflammation or swelling swelling of the bronchioles and bronchi bronchioles. Prevent asthma attacks before they start. So the patient needs to recognize and avoid certain triggers like cold air, pet fur, or uh, po pollen. Okay, Try to avoid inhaling these substances. Now, the second example of COPD is chronic bronchitis or long-term bronchitis. So you must add the word chronic there, right? So the cause is the inhalation of cigarette smoke, especially for heavy smokers, in heavy smokers that smoke for a long period of time. And it can also be inhalation of certain air pollutants. And all this may irritate the lining of the bronchi okay, and the bronchioles. So the parts that are affected by in chronic bronchitis are the bronchus or bronchi. That's why you have the term bronchitis, meaning the inflammation of the two bronchi here. And textbook also add in the bronchioles, okay, inflammation of bronchioles. So we'll just include it in based on the textbook, okay, as uh, questions and answers given will be related to the textbook, right? So in this case, the bronchioles and the bronchi are inflamed, caused by the inhalation of chemical substances such as those found in cigarette smoke, okay? So the inflamed swollen bronchus will cause the airway to become narrower. All right, as you can see here, the wall is very thick and swollen. Compared to a normal healthy bronchus, the wall is thinner and it's not inflamed, right? So furthermore, there may be excess mucus, there's usually excess mucus produced because the cells in the lining of the, the bronchial tubes are irritated and then they produce a lot of mucus. So when the person coughs, a lot of mucus is produced or, or, or coughed out. Now, thirdly, there is damaged cilia, meaning to say the secret smoke damages the cilia, which are the tiny projections on the cells lining the bronchus or bronchioles. So the damaged cilia cannot sweep out the mucus and expel it, okay, because they, they, they cannot move. And then uh, this will cause the mucus to be, you know, 
stuck or remain inside the bronchial tubes. Okay, so this will cause the person to cough excessively to get rid of all this mucus. And the cough will have, the coughing will con, you know, cause a lot of mucus to be, uh, to be coughed up. So what are the symptoms? Now the symptoms of the chronic bronchitis are shortness of breath because of the blocked airways and the narrow airways. This will cause a lack of oxygen, okay? A decrease in the oxygen inhaled into the lungs. Then there's a long-lasting cough that lasts more than three months, okay? Where there's a lot of mucus that is coughed up. So this bronchitis, chronic bronchitis, is uh, diagnosed uh, when a person has a long-lasting cough lasting more than three months for a period of two years, okay? In the two years, a cough that lasts more than three months, and then. Uh, that is the sign of one of the main symptoms of chronic bronchitis. Okay, other than that, there's chest tightness and wheezing because of the narrow airways. The air flowing through the narrow airways will cause the wheezing sound. Here is a very good diagram to help you further understand what chronic bronchitis is. So you can copy down these notes. Now, as we have discussed for asthma, in the normal condition for a healthy person, the wall of the bronchi or bronchial is not inflamed or swollen. Okay, then uh, the wall is thinner, so the airways are wider. And there's a small amount of mucus that lines the airways, as usual. Then um, the smooth muscle in the wall of the bronchial is relaxed. Now in chronic bronchitis, due to the inhalation of cigarette smoke, okay, the inhalation of cigarette smoke or other air pollutants, uh, the wall of the bronchi and bronchial is inflamed or swollen due to these irritants that are breathed in. And then when it becomes swollen, the wall will move inwards a bit and the airways will become narrower. So airflow will be reduced. Now this is the cross section of the bronchi and the bronchioles. So the wall of the bronchi or bronchioles are inflamed here, they are thicker and this causes the airways to be narrower. Furthermore, a lot of mucus is secreted because the cells lining the bronchial tubes are irritated and they will secrete a lot of mucus, which will block the airways further, right? And then lastly, in bron chronic bronchitis, uh, the cilia on the cells lining the, the surface of the bronchial tubes, okay, are damaged. So damaged cilia on the inner surface of bronchial tubes here causes difficulty in expelling mucus because the cilia, the job of the cilia or the tiny hair like projections is to sweep the mucus out from the bronchioles and bronchi out of the trachea, all right, for it to be expelled, for it to be coughed out or spit out. But then due to the damage to the cilia, the cilia is unable to carry out its function of sweeping out the mucus. So this will also cause the person to constantly cough in trying to expel the excess mucus from the body. So that's what happens in chronic bronchitis. Here's a diagram that shows the causes of chronic bronchitis, which I've already discussed. So very briefly, chronic bronchitis is caused by the inhalation of irritants or substances that irritate the lining of the bronchi and the bronchioles. Then this causes the bronchi and the bronchial wall to swell up, okay, become inflamed and swell up, and the cells produce excessive mucus. So what are the substances that are the irritants to the bronchi and the bronchioles? Cigarette smoke is the first one, okay, inhalation of cigarette smoke is the main cause of chronic bronchitis in 90% of patients, and especially when the smoking is uh, occurring over a long period of time. Right. Also, inhalation of other irritants such as air pollutants from industrial processes and exhaust fumes, inhalation of dust particles floating in the air, and uh, inhalation of chemical fumes from paint sprays. All these can irritate the lining or the cells found in the lining of the bronchi and bronchioles and cause a production of excessive mucus and thus cause chronic bronchitis. Okay, so the symptoms are a cough, which sometimes is called a smoker's cough. And this cough is a long-lasting cough, uh, maybe for three months or more, 
with the production of excessive mucus, the coughing up of excessive mucus. That is the main sign of chronic bronchitis. Chest feels tight, there's difficulty in breathing, and there's tightness and fatigue. So here are the notes on chronic bronchitis. So these notes can be used to answer questions, longer questions in the structured or objective sections. Now, number one, definition, a disease in which the bronchi or bronchial tubes become inflamed, swollen or blocked. So there's long-term inflammation in chronic bronchitis. Now, in the textbook, they include the bronchioles as the tubes that are inflamed. Okay, But uh, from many sources, uh, chronic bronchitis is defined as the inflammation of the bronchi, which are the bigger tubes. Right? So we put we add both of it down since the textbook also include bronchioles. So inflammation of the bronchi and bronchial. And then this reduces the flow of air, causing difficulty in breathing. So a lot of mucus is produced, causing continuous coughing to expel the mucus. And then damaged cilia causes difficulty in, expel, in expelling mucus. Okay, so take note. Inflammation of the walls of the bronchial or the lining of the bronchial and bronchi. And then second point, a lot of mucus produced. And thirdly, damaged cilia. Now the cause and symptoms have been discussed. And so we just jot it down, right? So what is the treatment of prevention, steps to prevent chronic bronchitis? Now here are the smart notes. So the treatment and prevention is similar to that of asthma, except that it's not related to allergies. Right? So the first uh, similarity is that the medication used can be inhaled by using the inhaler here, the L-shaped device, to quickly relax and open the swollen air passages in the lungs and make breathing easier. And secondly, steroids can also be inhaled to reduce swelling or inflammation in the bronchioles. All right. Now, the third point here is that for serious cases of chronic bronchitis, the patient can wear the oxygen mask here, and this oxygen mask is connected to a tube, to a portable oxygen uh, container that has a lot of oxygen gas so that the patient can breathe in more oxygen okay, into his body. Now, then for prevention, avoid lung irritants such as smoke, cigarette smoke, that is cigarette smoke, toxic fumes, right? Maybe exhaust fumes and even fumes from uh, chemical fumes from chemical substances that irritate the bronchioles. So wear a face mask if the air is polluted to reduce inhalation of air pollutants that irritate the lining of the bronchi and the bronchioles and cause uh, excessive mucus production. Let's go on to the third disease, which is also one of the COPDs, and that is emphysema. Now, the cause of emphysema is quite similar to chronic bronchitis. It can be cigarette smoke or air pollutants that destroy the wall of the alveolus or alveoli. So, cigarette smoke contains chemical substances that are toxic and they, when they are breathed in over a long period of time, they damage the wall of the alveolus. All right, as you can see here, this is the normal alveoli with a lot of walls uh, inside this uh, cluster of alveoli. So these inner walls are covered by the blood capillaries to allow for efficient gaseous exchange. But when the walls are destroyed, the internal walls here, the inner walls are destroyed, thus the surface area for Gaseous exchange will be reduced. Okay, so gaseous exchange will become less efficient. Furthermore, if the inner walls of the alveoli are destroyed and break down, the size of the alveoli will increase, but it will lose its elasticity. Meaning to say, when we exhale air, normally in a normal person, when the air is exhaled, the alveoli will, because it's elastic, it has stretched, it will shrink back in size, and it will help to push the air out of the lungs in exhalation. But for a person who has emphysema, the alveoli has lost its elasticity, so it's difficult to exhale all the air from the alveolus, since the alveoli cannot shrink back to its uh, small size all right, during exhalation. So a lot of uh, carbon dioxide will be trapped in the lungs, and less oxygen will be uh, inhaled to diffuse into the blood and transport, be transported to cells for cellular respiration. So gaseous exchange becomes less efficient overall. Okay, so what are the symptoms or effects of emphysema? Now, due to the lack of oxygen, due to the 
the reduced gaseous exchange in the alveoli because of the damage to the wall of the alveoli. The person will suffer from shortness of breath. This is the main symptom of emphysema. So they cannot seem to get enough oxygen, even though they try to breathe very hard or very fast. Okay. Then uh, there's a cough. There may be a cough. There'll be cough, coughing, and then test, chest tightness and also fatigue or tightness due to the lack of oxygen. All right. Mainly in heavy smokers or chain smokers who have smoked for many years and they have caused the wall of the alveoli to break down. This condition is irreversible. Causes of emphysema in 90% of patients is the smoking, uh, cigarette smoke, then air pollution, dust, chemical fumes from pain sprays, just like for bron chronic bronchitis. Symptoms are the same like for chronic bronchitis. Shortness of breath, this is a very, uh, very, the main symptom for emphysema is shortness of breath, okay, because of the uh, decrease in gaseous exchange due to the uh, small surface, smaller surface area of the alveoli. Okay, cough, tightness, and fatigue. Chest feels tight. So here are the smart notes which you can copy to answer structured questions and essay questions. Okay, so emphysema is a lung disease in which the alveoli and the lungs are destroyed by exposure to cigarette smoke and other gases. So the inner walls of the alveoli are damaged and break down, creating larger air spaces. But the total surface area of the alveoli will decrease, all right, because the inner walls are broken down and there's less gaseous exchange. So alveoli will lose elasticity as it increases in size like this. And it's difficult to exhale out of the lungs because the alveoli cannot shrink back to its original size. So more carbon dioxide is, detained, is uh, retained in the lungs and the gaseous exchange becomes less efficient. So the person will suffer from lack of oxygen in the body and he will have shortness of breath. Okay, So the cause are ir irritants such as cigarette smoke, air pollutants, chemical fumes and dust. Now symptoms we have already discussed, except for this one, lips and fingernails turn blue on exertion. Now this can occur when the person who has emphysema tries to exert himself like run or do some activities that are very active. Because he has lack of oxygen, he will find that he cannot uh, get enough oxygen for cellular respiration to carry out these activities. And his lips and fingernails will turn blue, indicating that the blood in his body has a lack of oxygen. So the color of the blood is dark red. And then when you look at the lips and fingernails, you can see there's a bluish tinge due to the blood that flows underneath. Okay, that has a lack of oxygen. So here are the notes for the treatment or prevention of emphysema. Now, the treatment and prevention of emphysema is similar to that for bronchitis, chronic bronchitis. All right. So I'll go through it very quickly. Firstly, inhale medication to quickly relax the muscles in the lungs and open the swollen air passages so that there's more airflow and breathing will be easier. Secondly, inhale steroids to reduce the inflammation in the bronchioles so that again there's more airflow and breathing is more uh, is easier. Now thirdly, inhale oxygen from portable tanks if there is a serious lack of oxygen in the body. Fourthly, as a preventive measure, avoid lung irritants such as cigarette smoke and toxic fumes that irritate the bronchioles. So for people who smoke, the heavy smokers, they have to sm stop smoking. And lastly, wear a face mask to protect the lungs if air is polluted to reduce inhalation of air pollutants. Now, here is a good question that can come up in the exam, a comparison between the three lung diseases, right? So state two similarities and two differences between asthma, bronchitis, and emphysema, four marks. So here are the two similarities. All three diseases are classified as chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, which are a group of long-term lung diseases, long-term, right? Now, in all three diseases, there is reduced air flow in air passages and difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath. So one mark for each similarity. Differences. Asthma is caused by allergy or hypersensitivity to certain substances like dust, pollen, cold air, animal fur. And it can also be caused by stress in the asthmatic uh, patient. It can trigger, be triggered by stress too. 
Now for chronic bronchitis, it's not caused by allergies. It is caused by inhaling cigarette smoke or air pollutants, which are irritants to the cells in the respiratory tract. For emphysema, it is not caused by allergies. It is caused by inhaling cigarette smoke or air pollutants that damage the walls of the alveoli. Now, secondly, what are the symptoms? In asthma, the bronchial walls are inflamed, swollen, and thick. Okay. Uh, similarly, for chronic bronchitis, the bronchi, the walls of the bronchi and bronchioles are inflamed, swollen, and thick. But in emphysema, the walls of the alveoli are damaged, and the total surface area of the alveoli decreases. So, for emphysema, the part that is affected are the alveoli. Okay. Whereas for asthma and chronic bronchitis, is the bronchial walls and for chronic bronchitis, the bronchi is also inflamed. Now, for asthma, there may or may not be a production of uh, mucus, but in chronic bronchitis, there is always excessive mucus produced because the cells in the lining of the bronchial tubes are irritated. Then they secrete a lot of mucus when the area there is inflamed, right? And this will cause blockage and there's always continuous coughing with a lot of phlegm or mucus coming out. Now in emphysema, the walls of the alveoli are damaged. So it's the alveoli that is damaged and the total surface area of alveoli decreases, leading to less gaseous exchange. Now there may be some mucus or phlegm, but uh, it is not uh, the main symptom of emphysema. Okay, As compared to chronic bronchitis, the main symptom of chronic bron bronchitis is a cough that has a lot of mucus in it, or coughing out a lot of mucus over a long period of time, like three months. Formative Exercise 8.4, page 128 of your book, textbook. State three effects of chronic bronchitis on the bronchial. So take note, it's chronic bronchitis that's discussed here. So in chronic bronchitis, the bronchioles become inflamed, swollen, and blocked. This reduces the flow of air and causes breathing difficulties. And secondly, a lot of mucus is formed, which causes continuous coughing. Thirdly, the damaged uh, cilia in the bronchial lining causes difficulty in expelling mucus. Right? Now, number two, explain the condition of the bronchial walls in asthmatic patients. Now we're going to talk about asthma. Right? So firstly, the bronchial walls, again, it's about bronchial walls. Huh? Bronchial walls swell and thicken due to allergic reaction to pollen and other substances. This makes the opening of the bronchial tube uh, smaller and so it the airway for airflow becomes narrower so there is reduced airflow right and breathing difficulties then uh, cells in the lining may produce more mucus so these changes make the breathing difficult and the person will not get enough air into the lungs okay so for asthma the bronchial walls also get inflamed and swell and thicken all right and uh, there is less airflow. And then there may be production of mucus. Why does an asthmatic patient use an inhaler to help him breathe? Ah, so this is from your textbook. So you must know the function of inhaler. Now, inhaler contains medication, which is breathed in to open the bronchial tubes by relaxing the muscles in the walls. Okay, because in the asthmatic, in, a, in an asthmatic patient, the muscles are contracting so now after bring, breathing in the medication the muscles will relax okay other medication inhaled like steroids huh, reduces inflammation of the bronchial tubes and these actions will allow air to flow more easily through the bron bronchioles okay for faster gaseous exchange now explain why gaseous exchange is less efficient for emphysema patient the alveoli alveoli walls become damaged by substances in cigarette smoke and the air pollutants causing the walls to break down, thus the total surface area of the alveoli for gaseous exchange is reduced and gaseous exchange becomes less efficient. Now here is an SPA past years question that is also uh, found on page 140 in your textbook, right? So it is related to the effects of cigarette smoking. Now 5A, a heavy smoker can easily suffer from a prolonged cough. Explain how this condition affects the function of the respiratory system. Okay, so take note now, it's heavy smoker. So it's the effect of smoking on the function of the respiratory system. And the prolonged cough, how does this condition occur? 
why is there this symptom of prolonged cough? So effects of smoking on the respiratory system that causes the prolonged cough. Number one, the heat generated from cigarettes dries up the walls of the trachea and bronchi, right? So it irritates the lining of the trachea, the bronchi and bronchioles. Toxins in cigarette smoke damage and slow down the movement of the cilia, as we have discussed for chronic bronchitis. So the cilia is unable to sweep up and expel the mucus and toxins from cigarette smoke. Thirdly, more mucus is produced due to the inflammation of the airways caused by the inhalation of cigarette smoke. So as in the case, and this can, uh, is a symptom of chronic bronchitis that occurs to smokers. Next, so coughing is a reflex action to expel the excess mucus and toxic substances, substances from the respiratory tract. Now, apart from that, cigarette smoke can damage the alveoli, reducing the total surface area for gaseous exchange. And it can cause emphysema, which causes shortness of breath and fatigue. Now, and let's look at B now. Suggest another illness that is frequently suffered by heavy smoker. One mark. So uh, the first illness that we have discussed is more related to chronic bronchitis. And if you have not mentioned about emphysema in this first answer, you can mention it in B as the one of the illnesses suffered by a heavy smoker. So heavy smoker will suffer from chronic bronchitis and emphysema. And also one more disease, which is lung cancer. So lung cancer is caused by carcinogens that are inhaled in the cigarette smoke, such as tar and other carcinogens too, that induce or cause the growth of cancer cells in the lungs. So the cigarette smoke is full of toxic substances. Now, carcinogens means substances that cause cancer. Now, third question here, C. Explain the effects of tar in cigarette smoke on the smoker. So tar is deposited on the surface of alveoli. It's a blackish substance. So it blackens the lungs and alveoli and reduces the efficiency of gaseous exchange, right? And then, uh, because it will cover the surface of the alveoli. And then, it causes cancer of the lungs because it's a carcinogenic substance. Right, that's all for this lesson. Thanks for viewing, and I hope you have benefited from this lesson. Please do share, like, and subscribe. And we'll meet again in the next lesson. Goodbye for now.